Tell me about Convoy Ventures and how it started. Yeah, yeah, Convoy Ventures. Okay, so we're we're a pre-seed fund here in Utah. We only invest in in uh, early stage startups. Love to be the first check in when we can be. Uh, we started, wrote our first check January one of twenty two. Uh, so we're just about two years into this thing. And who so, was the first check? Uh, who was the first check? First check was a, was a company that we co invested in with uh, John Mayfield and Album, a startup called Bodega. Um, so okay. yeah. Yep. So that one's, uh, what's the first check that we did? Um, but yeah, as you know, like kind of some of the background on us, we started convoy originally started as just like a community, like it was a community for founders. Uh, you went on a, on a trip or two with us. Yeah, I did. It was actually way fun. Yeah. I went to Austin with you on the, um, yeah, you brought like a, an incredible group of CEOs and leaders together. I thought that was way cool. Yep, yep. So that was, that was where we started, you know, 10 years ago. It was just this community for founders and, and entrepreneurs. And we took trips around the country internationally. And then, you know, Scott Paul, my partner, we've been we've been close friends for the past decade or so. He was first investor in my first company, um, was on the board of a nonprofit that I started, Room Here, that yeah, mental yeah, health yeah. nonprofit. Um, and then we started the fund January one is, is when we wrote the first check, you know, obviously we're working on it a little bit before that, but yeah. Why do you want to be an investor? It's so weird, right? Like it's, but actually it's, it's the coolest thing that I've ever done. It, yeah. it, I, I love the fact that I can spend all day with, with founders that are like the most ambitious people in the world, in my opinion. Um, and just get to support them in their dreams and what they're, what they're trying to build. And it's, it, it legitimately is I can't imagine a thing that's that'd be more fun than this. Yeah, it seems it seems super fun. And you have like an incredible knack for like community building and surrounding people um, with community, which I think is a really important trait in uh, an investor for sure. Right. Like being able to like, hey, I can surround you with everything you need. Yeah, yeah. I mean, that that's the whole premise of why we started our fund. A, all of our all of our LPs, all of our investors are all founders and operators. So there's guys that are way guys and women that are that are way more smart, experienced, intelligent, uh, successful than Scott Scott and I that have that can help our founders in whatever area that that, that they need. Um, so we have sixty LPs that are all founders and operators, and then yeah, c- uh, talent, customers, and just like people that are going through the same thing, being a founder is lonely and having a community is, we feel like is a super important part of the journey. Yeah. Being a founder is lonely. What's the latest with room here and what is your thoughts on mental health in the state? And I know we've had a bunch of conversations about this personally, like, and man, I still don't know an answer. We, it. Yeah, we had we had a long conversation about this, and and I I I think that the that ultimately like for me where I'm at currently is we need to just like take the priority on for founders needs to be taking care of themselves, and t- and that and like self care is almost like has like a weird connotation, but it w- to me what it means is just like hey if you want to take care of your mind you need to take care of your body, and mm-hmm. that just means like get out move your body, get fresh air, like, and, and like, don't neglect yourself. Don't not sleep. Don't eat terribly. Mm. And, and it's just like, if you want to perform at your best as a, as a founder, it's like the body, the mind, like yeah. it, it, you can't separate the two. So, so that's, that's a super important piece of it. Um, the, I don't know how to solve the, the kind of end like crisis state, but like, I think the most effective thing that we can do is like, do everything we can to stay out of crisis mode. And yeah. and that that's kind of where where we struggled with room here the most is just being like we were trying to solve the crisis state um and and I think it's like really just trying to get to like the um the like earlier and just being like hey, let's all talk about this, let's normalize it and make sure that we're doing this in a way that's not um that's not just like burning people out to the point to where they can't function and operate. Yeah, it's fascinating because, like, I wonder how much of that is societal. I wonder how much of that comes from the community. I wonder how that much of that has nothing to do with any of that and yeah. just is internal. Uh, I mean, one thing that we talk about it with, with uh, like, uh, and I, I honestly don't know if this is a phrase that I made up or if we, if I heard it somewhere, somewhere and if I stole it from someone U- in Utah, apologies. But, like, we look for freak founders when we, when we invest in startups. Mm-hmm. And, like, by nature, 
entrepreneurs and founders are crazy. Like legitimately you have to be wired very differently yeah. to want to build a billion dollar company. Like you're you're by nature an outlier in the way that you try try to think. So I think it it like naturally attracts people who whose brains think differently and will work harder and burn themselves out. And so there's just a lot of things that are just kind of like built into it. Like, like it's, it's an insanely hard thing to try to build a billion dollar company, you know? And so it's like, yeah, why would anybody want to do that? It's honestly, honestly, the thing that I think a lot about is like, I think we should be discouraging entrepreneurship from more, more people like legitimately, like the, like the founders that we back, um, it, they don't have a choice. Like, it, like they can't not be founders, but like, there's a lot of people I'm like, why don't you just make six figures working at, w- at name X, Y, Z tech company. Or just don't take or, investment and s- yeah, start totally. a company that, you know, doesn't have to make a billion dollars. <laughs> there's so many paths that are probably better for like basically everyone, you know? And, and there, I think that there is a lot of, a lot of that we uh, glamorize in the, the VC rounds and the VC rounds are not the goal. That's not the thing that we're going for, yeah. you know? And, and it's like building businesses and you don't need VC to build a profitable great business that honestly 99% of America would be like completely envious of, but it doesn't get bootstrapping doesn't get uh, glamorized in the same yeah, way. Yeah, it should, which is, which is really interesting because all of our most successful companies bootstrap forever. Yeah. That came out of the, the state of Utah. And so I don't know why that gets lost in the story sometimes. I mean, Qualtrics is like 11 years. Plural site was 10. Domo was still like five or six, yeah. even though he could raise immediately. Omniture was six or seven. I don't know. Yeah. Like yeah. it's kind of crazy. They're all like pretty the, bootstrap. The the narrative totally changed. Cause like, like 11 years, I think, I think it was 11 year girls, years ago when Qualtrics raised their, their round. And I think they were like the first, like, you know, obviously after Omniture and, and many, but that, that felt like kind of like, when you started Beehive and like when the yeah. scene kind of started feeling like the scene, like that Qualtrics was the one that I was like, what they raised, how much? Like yeah. this, it, it just became so wild. And I think everyone just was like, those numbers are astronomical versus like in, in for the, for the most part, like it kind of flew under the radar before that, you know, and yeah. it was really the funding thing that I was like, wow, I kind of have a, an idea of what companies can be now. Oh yeah. Um, and so, yeah, it, it's this like kind of perverse like way that we view it because there's, there's no, we're, we're not saying like, Oh, this bootstrap company just hit 5 million in revenue, 10 million in revenue, 50. Million, and, and so it's like, there's no metric that people can tie to yeah. at the funding rounds. is such an easy metric to tie to. Yeah. So, yeah. It's like, oh, you have this valuation, and when you sell it for eight billion, and then somehow sell it again for twelve billion, <laughs> uh, yeah. you know, you're gonna make like a, a statement to the yep. world. Yep. I wonder, like, um, I think Divi had a lot to do mm. with uh, culture shift, right, in a good way. Yeah, but like Divi, like, started in like 2018, 19. I can't remember. Like, uh, but I remember them walking into the Izeni. I remember Blake walking into the Izeni office and being like, "Hey, wait, this is what we want to do," and um, and that wasn't long ago. Like, yeah, like, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like it's either like 18 or 19 and then he's done and it's a billion dollar company. It's not done, but you know, like the company was like, he, he had an exit within four years. Yeah. Yeah. That's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. There's a lot of things that happen. I mean, like, like another company that I walked in the eyes, any office weave, like it was like, yeah. like them and Vid, Vidpresso at the same time went, went through YC and I was like, and all of a sudden company, uh, like we're like, Oh, you, there's more than one route that Utah companies can take. Yeah. And so that it like, there's a lot of these things that started to happen. It's like, Oh, there's a, there's a lot of different things that d- different paths. And the one that got talked about the least was bootstrapping, you know? And so yeah. I, I think that's, I think it's a, uh, one thing that we say at, at convoy is, is you don't have to bootstrap your company in order for us to invest, but you need to be able to bootstrap. And yeah. so, and so like we see a lot of companies that they say, Oh, we're going to, we're going to raise 500,000 and go hire a dev shop out of India to build a product. It's like, yeah. it's like, no, you need to have a technical, technical co-founder that can get an MVP out. And if, oh, and yeah. if you don't have somebody that can sell, that can, that can lead the product vision and that can that can build the thing it's like you need to get the team right before you before you're oh, yeah. raising funding and and i think we've lost lost our way a lot on, on that in utah because of the success that's that that's happened and so and like i'm seeing like you could just people just you have to be obsessed with the idea mm-hmm. like literally obsessed yeah like blake murray he was obsessed it's yeah. like all right yeah 
this is this same freak. with Brandon Rodman. Like yeah. that, you know, they're, they're like obsessed with this. Like, I want to solve this problem. Well, why do you give a shit if uh, dentists can automate their, you know, scheduling yeah, appointments? Yeah. And he's like, no, this is my entire life. Well, like, okay, yeah. yeah, then that's gonna be successful. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Because right? hey, if I remember correctly, I think Brandon wanted to be a dentist, and he was like, well, actually, <laughs> I'm just gonna build software for dentists instead, <laughs> and probably make way more money than than all of them did. Oh, you yeah. know, so yeah, I think I think it, that like that interest that he had that predates when he started yeah. Weave, you know. So we should. I wonder if there is something around like celebrating like an enormous company is Bamboo HR. Mm, yeah. And because they've never taken venture funding, they don't get talked about in like the Qualtrics, Pluralsight, Domo, Weave, Divi, Podium, like those like just because they never had to raise right. money. But it's, that's, that's an enormous Yeah, company. yeah, yeah. And that just, it's just, so crazy. Just flies under the radar, you know, and, and in, in Trotta in, in, in a lot of the same ways before they raised, yeah. did their, their big, uh, yeah, there's there's a lot of these things that it's just like, oh, we're ignoring, not ignoring, but but they're not, get they don't get a lot of the same notoriety because they haven't announced a nine-figure round. Yeah. You mentioned YC. Why don't we have a version of that in Utah? Why yeah. do you think that's never worked here? Um, I, I think that YC, so, I mean, combo, we, we, start, we actually did a, did a beta version and we alpha version of an accelerator. Um, so we're, we're, we're working on that. I don't think that anyone will get to the level of a, of a YC, but like what we're trying to do at Convoy is trying to, trying to create something that I think will be very beneficial to, um, folks who don't want to move their family out to the Bay area, who want to have all of the mentorship, all of the network be very Utah focused. Um, and the way that we're structuring it is just to try to be, um, yeah, more, more, in, uh, I don't want to say inclu- inclusive sounds wrong, but like, just like to uh, provide more options for, for Utah founders. But yeah, I, I think that there's something about like, the best is going to be the best and it's going to be hard to to compete with a, with a YC sort of a thing. It's interesting. Like, I didn't even know you were doing it. So that, that's so, so. Uh, I remember Boom Startup gave it a try, yeah. and I thought I actually thought Boom Startup was pretty they some, cool. They had some and good things. Like Four Up came out of that, um, and there's there's a, there's a handful of decent companies. What is it like, like Pando Ventures? And then there's something here locally that does a. Um, how am I not remembering them? They just raised this huge fund. Like oh, uh, Rev Road, yeah. Rev Road yep. does some version of that. Yep. But. Um, Interesting. So tell me more about this accelerator. Yeah, yeah. So, this is so really cool. yeah. So, oh yeah, and the Gundys are trying something. Yeah, and yeah. So yeah, I think I think that there's a lot like so the the thing about you know the venture community and a lot of things that are happening right now. There's there's a lot of everyone's like oh, I feel like every time I turn around there's a new fund you know mm-hmm. and I'm like I'm like I, I'm right here like <laughs> I, I hear what you're saying. you know no but uh, yeah like I think that's a good thing because like every every fund has its own personality with the things that they like to invest in. Um, um, and yeah, I, and I think it's a good thing for the state to have more than one uh, group that's doing doing things. So like having more accelerator or really early help mm. o- options. The way that we that we did it, uh, the accelerator for Convoy, we took two problems that that we saw. One, we saw founders that were just slightly early for us. And when I say early, I just mean like the founders are a little bit under experienced mm-hmm. for for what we what we would normally back. Um, and then, and then also, uh, they, and so they'd say stuff like, oh, I'm just looking for mentorship and you know, a founder that, that we back, that's not the primary thing that they're looking for. It's yeah. like, we've got something really impressive, re- really amazing here that we're excited about. Just help us to help us to pour gasoline on the yeah. fire. So it was like, all right, there's this like sharp group of founders that need a little bit of help. Um, and so that was the first thing. And then for us as a fund, we see about a hundred startups a month. Um, and we're able to invest in about a hundred startups. Yeah. A month. Mostly all almost all Utah startups. So there's a, it, it, which is like, why we're so bullish on this state. Like there's just so oh many, gosh. so many startups that are like, there's just no shortage of people that are coming out of the universities that are yeah. coming out of, out of the divvies, the podiums, the, the weaves, et cetera, um, Qualtrics and Pluralsight, all these companies. So there's just so much talent and so many people that are starting things up. Um, and, but yeah. And, and so it's like, if we're investing in 1% of the companies that we see, um, it's not that we don't like all the rest of the companies. It's just you can't invest in everyone. You yeah. Know? And so, so, so those two problems that we were, what we're trying to solve with the accelerator. So first is how do we help more founders? Second is how do we 
as a company who has to, as a firm who has to pass on a bunch of stuff that we like, what do we do about that? So this accelerator is essentially that. So for the first cohort we did, there was five, uh, five companies that went through, um, companies that we loved and companies that we wanted to get to know a little bit better. Weren't quite there on, on investing in them, but we wanted to get to know them better. Um, and then eight week program, uh, in intro and then then like a demo day at the end and then two weeks on on product we had uh, uh nate walkingshaw um who's like the product right. god in utah right yeah, um and then Kay- kayla worthen that led uh led product at uh mm-hmm. at podium in the um in the payment space and like one of the best product minds that we have as well then we had um uh, go to market we had sterling snow who is like one That's, of the he knows pro- what he's doing there yeah you know and so any and then we had Kat kennedy come in tyler yeah. hogue we had uh um, you know, all these folks that are just like the people have been there, done that. And I, I think the the best people in, in Utah, and this, the best builders in, in the mm-hmm. state. And so we, um, so yeah, that's what we brought. And, and it's like, honestly, like I looked at YC, I stole every single thing that they, that I could find online. Tech stars talked to every single every single founder that uh, that I could talk to that um, that went through from Utah, and then just put our Utah flair on it. And that was really what we we're trying to do. This is cool. I didn't even know you're doing this. I love that you're doing this. Like we we need something like this. It's really interesting that it hasn't like really taken off. Like like how is Boulder, Colorado launching uh, tech stars? You know, and launching them everywhere. Over Utah, like we're yeah. way better than Boulder. Yeah, yeah, for sure. I always for tell sure. Brad Feld, Brad Feld's like, you guys will never be able. I'm like, we're already better than you. Yeah. Yeah, like, I don't uh, know what to tell you. Yeah, it, 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 we. This is actually probably. The, I think this is the first time that I've talked open, like because it was an alpha. Like we just, I was like, I don't know. Oh, this, I see. Yeah, I don't yeah. know if this is gonna flop. I don't know if this yeah. is gonna be good or not. So yeah, I didn't post about it anywhere. I didn't didn't really tell anyone outside of like. The, in fact, I actively told people, I'm like, this might suck, you guys. Like if you, <laughs> if you're part of this and it sucks, like deepest apologies. But if you want to be a part of this alpha program, we're doing it. So that's so so. Do they take? Is it the same kind of like terms as YC oh, and stuff? So th- so. So that was that was the part that we this was the biggest innovation that we had um so we said like there's a lot of lot of uh, accelerators and programs that they'll take um that they'll charge companies that they'll take a bunch of equity before even delivering anything um and so and then on the flip side we actually aren't uh, at the beginning aren't aren't writing a check to them um but what we're doing is we're completely de-risking it for the founders so they're um so we don't they don't give us any cash or equity we don't give them any any cash in exchange for equity we have eight weeks to prove our worth to them so it's like mm. if the program is valuable then it's like then uh if we're introducing them to potential customers advisors people like the curriculum is valuable then there's like a little tip jar at the end um yeah. and so at the at the end of the at the end of the eight weeks we said if, if this was worthless don't give us any equity we we need to earn the equity if it's valuable give us one percent it feels like a game changer give us give us two percent feels like man i this is the best thing i've ever done give us three percent equity and we have to earn that and and we have no pressure we we say whatever you think this is worth give us give us that at the end and so of the four of the five companies uh four out of the five gave us one percent at the end of the eight weeks of the alpha program i was yeah. like i was like cool like that that I, we got what we deserved, I think, because it was yeah. like we delivered some value in the alpha. There was still a lot of things that we we're learning. But but the biggest thing that that was validating is that people wanted to do it and uh, before it. And then at the end, they were like, yeah, we got some value out, out of it. So I, I, I that to me was the, the that model was the innovation of de-risking it for founders, yeah. making it like my our intent was to literally be the most founder friendly program that exists. Uh, and I love and that. so, yeah, so we're, so it's a uh, yeah, we'll 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 do another cohort. Uh, um, early early next year, Q1, Q2, th- Q2 of, of next year. So That's really cool. That's super interesting. Um, is Convoy the earliest investor in the state? Like, like there's not – everyone else seems to, like, move upstream. You kind of have to, right? Like, as you um, raise more money and your fund gets successful, then you got to deploy more money. And in order to deploy more money, you got to go upstream yeah. to, like – Kind of like bigger seed rounds. They're mo- mostly what Series A, Series B, those types of things, and it seems like that's what kind of like all the prominent um, funds from, you know, the era we were talking about have, have kind of done. They've just like yeah. raised huge funds, and so now, 
Is anybody investing like really early like you? Yeah, guys? yeah, definitely, definitely. Um, there, we've co-invested with basically every fund in Utah, um, and so you know all the ones that you think about that, um, like like I said, our first check was um, with that we did with Album and John Mayfield. Yeah. That it was literally just like a memo that they they didn't even have a deck yet. Like it was a memo that they that they uh, that we invested on. So um, and then Kickstart, Peterson, Pelion, Signal P. You know we've we've invest we've co-invested with. With everyone, I would I would say that more consistently we're we're writing earlier checks, um, but that's that's like our whole thing is like like uh, we're more likely to say too late than too early um, at, at, mm. at us, and and I think a lot of a lot of funds are are like okay if we ha- if we get to high conviction very early we'll write the check, but for them a lot a lot of times it's um, the seed is is I think where most of the funds like to play, but I would guess. Um, I would guess probably a third of their checks are are like true pre seed that that, yeah. that they're doing. So, how big is the convoy fund? I don't even know. Yeah, so we're um we're in we have a initial proof of concept fund that we're investing out of. We're calling it calling it our uh, our proof our fund zero is what what we're yeah. calling it. So it's a six and a half million dollar proof of concept fund. So a little bit smaller than like fund one of uh from Kickstarter. From, yeah. from their their back back in the day. Um, and then we're in the process of of going through the the next fund right now. So what's it, how has it changed since you started Convoy to now? Like I mean, in that period, it seems like everyone's been like, yeah, raise, 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 and now it's like. Just lay everybody off. How much can you like do without people? Like make as many cuts. Profitability is king. Mm-hmm. Just be profitable. And that seems like, you know, it was one that was kind of macroeconomic forces, like the market kind of telling everybody, hey, there might be a recession here. Things are slowing down. Look at inflation, that type of stuff. And then the other part is like, I think a lot of people just saw Elon do it at Twitter yeah. and been like, whoa, you can just cut like 80% of your staff yeah, and still yeah. be fine. Yeah. Right. And then, and they all started doing that. Like literally every big tech company started doing that. And that's, tr- that's now trickled down to everyone mm-hmm. is like, yeah, just cut. So what is it like as a VC now, um, in that environment? Yeah, for sure. Now the, I have like the, you know, as, as, for founders right now, I have just so much empathy for for what how the game has changed for them. You look at a founder that started their startup in twenty twenty three, uh, twenty twenty, and it, three mm-hmm. years ago, and it's like, all right, you have COVID, and then you have all of the like the inflationary things, and then you have the um, and then you have the venture market fall apart, then you have all these layoffs and all of these things, and it's just like it's like okay, growth at all costs. It's like nope, no, no, it's like that you have to be profitable while still growing at this at this crazy. You know, and so it's just like it's just so hard for founders to, and I and I see that a lot of that of founders like still trying to catch up to man, the game has changed, and and you need to play it differently, and your next round is not guaranteed, and and so yeah. all of those all of those things. So for us, it's a lot of education for founders to be like, hey, like the way you're thinking about venture capital, like you need to be a lot more uh, cash. Um, a lot more judicious with with your funds than than previously, um, so that's a lot of our conversations. Is 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 like yeah, you never know if that if the next round is going to come together, and um, yeah, so that it's 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 changed so much for founders, and and I just feel for founders that are like, man, this is not what you guys told us eighteen months ago, and so well, it's, it's crazy. The like the money was free. I mean, it really was. Like it was the weirdest thing yeah. ever. Like you could yeah. raise money pretty easily yeah. if you were. Um, and now I don't think that's the case, although I don't know, not like I was raising before or after all of this, but my sense of it is like, it's, it's pretty hard to raise, um, in this environment, probably pretty hard even to raise a fund. Right. And in some ways, like just cause LPs must be feeling that same kind of pressure as, um, the founders not, or, or is yeah. that, does that still stay the same? I actually don't know. I don't know. I'm yeah. Not anything about this. I, well, well, I, I need to be a little careful about talking about fundraising as, as a fund, um, just from kind of that's that side of things. Um, uh, but the, uh, but for, for fun, for startups, yeah, definitely is, is the game's yeah. changed a lot and it's, it's really, really difficult to, to raise, um, even like very seasoned founders who are like repeat founders that are like, you know, very, very strong, strong companies. Um, you know, there's the few, com- few come to mind that probably, I don't know if they'd want me mentioning their names, but like raised really solid rounds, but it took them so much longer that, you right. know, like, founders that are like, I've raised, oh, over the course of my career, I've raised 
10 or 15 rounds of funding. That round was the was the most difficult round and it was also the strongest company that I've had during yeah. during that period, you know. So, yeah, it's it's just a it's just a completely different environment. How do you think Utah's doing in general? Yeah, yeah, I, I think I think Utah's doing incredible. Uh, um, I, I think that there's uh, uh, there's a lot that we can improve on, and, and, and but I think yeah, I'm just so bullish. I, I mean, literally, we've we've staked our whole fund on on Utah and how bullish we are on Utah. So um, I, I the 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 funds like I, I I think that Gavin Gavin Christensen from from Kickstart. I think about how hard raising a fund, like yeah. how hard it is to rate for us to raise a fund right now, you know, and I, and I think it's going pretty well, but like the, mm-hmm. like it's still a difficult time to raise a fund. Like you think about two, I think it was 2008 when he, when he raised, raised his first fund and, yeah. and, and it's just or like, Oh six. Oh, so, yeah. Somewhere around there. Yeah. Yeah. It, well before yeah. like there's any real attention being paid. And I just think about him and like, like, wow, like, that's wild to me like that that you you know kind of pre pre everything that most most folks in the texting now are thinking about all the companies that we look to as the successes before they were even founded like that yeah. he did his first fund you know and yeah, it's like that's actually that, so cool yeah and, and so to think about like how far it's come along i still uh, you know i i hear a lot of this is not a unique to me uh statement but like we're still so early innings in terms of like the talent that's coming out of the companies the um the the funding the that's that's available and yeah there's just so many good things that are that are happening here where did your passion for events come from like camp convoy yeah. utah tech week um i mean you've done so many like the the trips that we went on like yeah. the early convoy and things like that like what is this like you're like this masterful event organizer and planner where does that come from yeah i've just always been like that like since i was like a middle schooler like i like i was like i was i I did a uh, March Madness pool. This is like the first, my, like, as I think back to, to the, like, I brought all these, these like seventh grade middle schoolers together to do a March Madness That's pool. Cool. And then we all like pulled our money together to buy pizza. And like, we all filled out our paper brackets and stuff like that. And I was, uh, cause I've thought about it. I'm like, what? And I've just kind of always been wired like that. I just love surrounding myself with people, natural extrovert, love to be around people, love to see connections happen. And, and yeah, I've just kind of always You're like the exact opposite of me. <laughs> like, I don't like any of that. And none of that comes like naturally at all. Like when we started uh, BI Startups, it was, I, we just wrote things. I was yeah. like, yeah, I could do that because yeah, yeah. I can be alone when I do that. And then they're like, hey, do events. I'm like, I don't know how to do it. I don't even <laughs> want to do events. Like this is crazy. Yeah. And so uh yeah, I'm I'm the exact opposite. I don't yeah, that that stuff does not come naturally. Well, what does come naturally for you and not that this is the point of the podcast is to, is this the point of the podcast is stroke stroke your ego? Is that I think is, so. yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah. I mean so, that's that's what so I So let's let's shift to that segment of the piece, I, I, piece that's of the, usually what I try to get the, <laughs> out of the guests. Honestly, it's like so why do you think I'm so cool? <laughs> <laughs> so the uh yeah, no, I I I think like the way that you've you've done it is like through storytelling that that's like the that's like the basis of communities like yeah. back to the caveman times is like how can we tell stories and so that's why i think like from the early beehive days what you did resonated so much because you're like there are so many untold stories right now and it's like yeah. what can how can we be a part of that that storytelling and then once the stories are told it's like oh can we like be together and and hear those yeah. stories can we meet the people so it's, to me it's like actually almost more of a natural way like literally as you go back to like caveman times it's like stories is the core of community totally unintentional too because like nobody ever read those stories (laughs) ever except for like the people i wrote about and that was like the fascinating thing i was like you know, we wake up one day, like a year and a half into it, and all of a sudden there's like this network of supporters for I, like this blog. Like, I, that's, that's I remember asking you, uh, like in the very early, because uh, was it Weave that was the first article, or was it, uh, it Ryan been, Westwood? It could have Westwood or Ricky Kodopaxi Butler. Or, yeah, it was, it was. Like, a, anyway, I remember like, ta- like, because we met like very early on, yeah. and, and I remember asking her, uh, it's like, how are the analytics doing on this? You're like, uh, the what? <laughs> and you like didn't even know how to check like the analytics on everything. It was it was like you were really just like, let's just tell stories and, and oh, yeah. like and and I that's what I loved about it uh, about it. Like at the time, you're just like, yeah, let's just and, and 
kind of the same thing with me. Like, like when we started the trips, I wasn't like, all right, master plan is yeah. most of these folks are going to have exits. And so they're going to become LPs and a venture yeah. fund that we started 10 years from now. It's just like kind of all happens. Like once you surround, start yeah. surrounding yourself with good people, like you, you really can't predict what, what yeah. good things happen. And if you just keep giving like the, the whole like give, 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 yeah. you know, uh, karma is probably a real thing. Yeah, for sure. Right. For sure. And like this idea of like, um, I think bringing people together around like a common cause, it's really interesting to do it around a region. Yeah. And we're like really good at it in yeah. Utah. We're yeah. like really good at rallying. Like, I don't know, like, is there like Arizona? Like, in, in, like I go to Arizona and there are like these communities, not to bash Arizona, because Arizona is awesome. But like, for some reason, we're really good at this. Yeah. In this state of like, locking arms and um telling our story yeah it's yeah, really yeah. it's really interesting it, it really is is very cool you know I, I i think it's one of those things that like um I, I don't know if it's if it's like the kind of the heritage of the state or whatever but yeah there is something about about we just really love celebrating the good things that other people are doing i think that yeah. i think that i don't know that how unique to utah that is but like i know for sure it exists here in utah yeah. we just love seeing other people win seeing the people around us win and want to be a part of that part of their success as well what do you think ai is doing to vc to these companies i mean i i, I was making a joke for a while for like a year and a half where like just say your company's AI enabled and you're going to get VC funding. And there was some truth to that. And obviously there's um, a lot of untruths about that. Yeah. I imagine that's not true now. Right. And and so like, what is this, what does all this mean? I mean, you look at open AI and they just had like this crazy battle for who gets to lead that thing. And Sam comes back after like three days or whatever it was. And it's like, man, is that like the most important company of all time? It's like, is that the last company to ever be built? Like, I don't know. AI is like, it's kind of freaking me out. Yeah. Yeah. No, it's, um, I I don't know that I have any, any like really unique take on this. Obviously the adoption of chat GPT was huge, is, remains huge, remains just like insane and mind blowing. And every, every time, like I was, uh, they just released the the voice uh, the voice chat last night, and I was like, I was like, I can't believe how long I talked with the with the ding yeah. chat GPT voice, you know. And so it's just it's just yeah, the the pace of innovation is is insane. The uh, from a like Utah perspective, um, I think a lot of the VCs um, that I'm having conversations with, a lot of it is is like uh, this. You know, you think about like uh, like the the 2000s, like the the dot com. Mm-hmm. It's like. A, the tech there was no doubt that the technology was right that the everyone knew that the internet was a mm-hmm. thing and it was was not going away but you think about how many of the companies were raising without um the fundamentals to back to back them um i think that's similar to what what's happening right now is everyone's just rushing and like w- nobody is doubting that i i don't want to say nobody but like very it's very consensus to be like ai is is here to stay and it's going to change it's going to revolutionize everything and everything is going to use ai in some way or another and that's that's like really because there's so much attention there like when something's consensus it's so hard to choose what's going to be right because everyone's putting their attention there so that's my that's my perception from talking to other folks in the state outside of the state is everyone's like a course this is going to be a thing but it's yeah. really hard to pick the individual winners within the space and honestly for me like i'm just kind of a doofus that is not a deep technologist or anything like that um but does does pretty well at, at seeing like where trends are going and yeah. and who really great founders are um and that's the, that's the hardest part for me is seeing how many it, it's very similar to the to like the web 3 craze of like just yeah. just 12 months prior it was like it was like this massive shift towards everyone's like everyone's building a web three startup and then everyone's building an AI company. It's like, like you just learned about chat GPT two weeks ago, you know, yeah. and it's like, <laughs> like, and so it's tough to be able to back founders who are, um, who pose themselves as experts without having the history to back it up. Yeah. The web three thing, I like, there were web three skeptics. I think I was probably one of them. Uh-huh. 
where I was like, so you guys are going to overthrow governments and there's not going to be, you know, like, yeah. cause the only thing that makes a government is they have their own currency. Yeah. I mean, it's not the only thing, but it's a pretty big piece of it. Yep. And so if you're going to replace their currency, I'm like, I don't know that they're going to allow you to do that. Yeah. And now all these guys are in jail or, you know, the big ones. Like yeah, CZ yeah. just had to resign yeah, and he just, got, he pled guilty for stuff. Like it's a, that one's kind of like a wild west type of thing. And there's probably, again, like I believe in the blockchain technology and all that type of stuff. There's something there that'll, that'll emerge out of it for sure. And already has, I think Bitcoin's incredible. Yeah. I, I really like the whole premise of Bitcoin. Yeah. But I don't know any AI skeptics. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's the only difference for me is like, yeah, this is real. This is something really incredible is happening here. Yeah, I, I think the biggest thing is that that like e this isn't the first time that there's been money dumped into AI. You know, and yeah. so this is we're on the third or fourth wave of this. You know, and, and so it's like crypto had like one. I, I like I genuinely think that crypto uh, is going to be a thing if it's specifically sure. Bitcoin. Like like uh, similarly like. Like I don't see a ton of people that are like, ah, oh, Bitcoin's just a yeah, just yeah. A, what, just a flash in the face. It's like eh, we're we're what 13, yeah. 14, whatever years in, into yeah. into Bitcoin right now. No, it's that's like, a serious thing. Yeah, yeah. Uh, crypto, like broadly, like that that has a lot to prove, you mm -hmm. know. And and but uh, but I think like the you know we did a lot of lot of Web three investments uh, early on, and those those were really tough. Like it, there was not the infrastructure to build on, so companies that uh, it took them a lot longer to get to market because like you know they didn't have the tools. To, to be able to build on yeah. Uh, yeah so anyway so I I the the companies that I see that are still in the space that weren't the tourists that's cause saw all the big yeah. flashy funds come through it's like well, there's something something interesting happened there you know I, it, w if and when it comes back remains remains to be seen I'm bullish on it long term and uh, and and I think that it will have some sort of moment where oh this is how you use it. This is how yeah. the general public, and that's what ChatGPT was. You know, yeah. it was like, it was like, oh, duh. Like if you don't ch get ChatGPT, yeah. Chat it's like, like what's, what century are you living in? My only concern is like, what I liked about the Web3 is like, oh, so um, it's kind of like Wild West, newcomers can come in and build huge companies and take on incumbents. Like, I love that, same with the internet, right? Yeah. It's like, hey, we're just gonna take off, take on the big guys. like. And uh, Bezos is like, I, I'm going to sell books and we're just going to put Barnes and Noble out of it. Yeah. Like all that stuff is like really cool, right? AI, it seems like is a little bit different in that the big companies are winning. Mm -hmm. Yeah, right out of yeah, the yeah gate, totally. Right? Yeah. I think that's that. That's kind of weird. Like, And you kind of need a huge company with a lot of data. Like how does Google not win this? How does Microsoft not win this? How does, you know, Zuck with Meta not win this and Elon with, with X, because you got all this data, like, and if you're an early stage startup, you've got, I've got like my phone contacts, like, let's do something like, like they got data. They've got some real data to play with, which I think makes it challenging for startups in some ways. For sure. Like th this is, this is like a, one of the things that's like fundamentally changed about like how, how VCs look at startups. Previously, it was like, oh, yeah, like startups have an advantage over over incumbents just for all the startup -y reasons, you know, can move faster, can like really focus on a problem that that it, uh, incumbents might be might not feel as large enough than they, the in, whole inno innovators dilemma thing. Um, yeah, this one is it's really like we look at competition. Uh, you know, of course, we always look at competition, but this is one where, where it's like, man. Like, you know, the, the old like, oh, what if Google builds this? What if Microsoft? That, that's like a that's like yeah. a legitimate thing. And, and it's like and, you know, these companies that have have tens, hundreds, millions of, of uh, users already, uh, tens of thousands, hundreds. Uh, yeah. and, and th like that's such a huge advantage to be able to just be like, oh, yeah. Like and the thing is, like, no one's getting caught off guard by it. Like everyone is yeah. thinking about AI. And that's the biggest thing is, is that like everyone has their has like most like incumbents have already implemented AI into, into their product in, in some way or another. Yeah, for sure. You can't really build build features yeah. that will plug into these big, like if there's like some Salesforce AI tool, I'm like, so that's, don't build that. Like, or things like that, because they're going to build it. Yeah. They've got it. Like yeah. this isn't super complicated stuff. Yeah. And so the innovation there is going to be really interesting. Like what comes out of that? And what the big companies are out of that, like obviously NVIDIA is like the most valuable company in the world now because they're like the picks and shovels guys for yeah, AI. Yeah. They're just like, hey, you're going to need all this. <laughs> uh, yeah. Good luck up there in the mountains trying yeah. to find the gold, right? Yeah. Um, and so that that's really interesting. It'll be interesting to just, they, but, but it, 
it didn't seem like there, and maybe it's because there weren't big players. Although you could say like, again, like these Barnes and Nobles and Walmart and all these types of people were big players, but they weren't online. Mm -hmm. Like these guys are like, they know what they're doing in this space. It's not like, I think it's going to be harder to catch this, this group of companies off guard. Yeah. And they also can toss $10 billion to the, they, all these companies have so much cash to be able to invest in an open AI or do whatever, you know? So it's, yeah, yeah, it's a, it's a much different era of the internet and, and everything compared to, uh, years and decades in the past. How often does like the culture of Utah come up in your conversations? Yeah, a lot. Um, I, I the uh, both in state and out of state, I'd say like yeah. uh, like the my my favorite my favorite thing that that happens is when I go to people who out outside of the state that like know what's happening in in Utah, they're like, "Man, you guys know how to sell." Like that that's the thing yeah. that everyone 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 sells everyone says, and you know, and like you know, obviously there's a lot of the sales culture and, you know, the Mormon missionary mm-hmm. thing cannot be discounted here and, and the success that we've had here. Um, so a lot outside of the, the culture of Utah, I think that's, that's a thing that, that plays into it a bunch. Um, it, for like, you know, when we're talking with founders, I, I'd say it's not a ton. I would say, I'd say it's like, just, just like, Hey, how can we build? How, who do we know within the space? So it's not like a, like a broader zoom out, how do we think about Utah? More just like who here can you connect me to that happens to live next to us? So so for us, you know, being a community first fund, that's that's our primary thing. Um, people like that, you, you know, all, we've done almost 40 investments so far and um, everyone that, we li- that we've invested in, um, we live 45 minutes to an hour yeah. like away from max. So, yeah. so that sort of stuff, it's just like being able to be close in person, I think is, um, the proximity is so huge in, uh, in the community and in the, in the culture of Utah. This is something we've talked about over the years. And it's obviously something that I think about a decent amount is like, what role does the tech community play in the culture in mm. Utah? Mm. Right. Yeah. And like, because we're kind of new to this game, uh, our voices are kind of, you know, we're just coming out of maturity that it's not cracking anymore. And we, we can kind of like speak clearly all of a sudden. Right. Uh, but we don't really still know what to speak clearly about yeah. or where our role is in terms of the overall broader culture of Utah. Yeah. Um, so I don't know that that muscle's really been flexed, uh, although you could argue Ryan's flexing it just on his own, just given like he's the powerhouse. Yeah, and, yeah. Um, you know, buying the jazz and being like, he's he's really changing the culture of Utah. Yep. But I wonder about like the, the overall community what our role is in that. Do you ever think about that? Yeah, I think about it. I think about it a lot. Cause I mean like the, a lot of the things that we're, that we're doing, like th- we we're driving growth, like, and growth creates a lot of the problems from a housing, housing standpoint. Um, if housing is affordable pollution, we, you know, we, every winter we, we see that, uh, see that as, as a problem, um, uh, from a water perspective, from, you know, all these things that are, that's like, economic prosperity brings these problems. Mm-hmm. Um, as the philosopher, philosopher said, more money, more problems, you know? Yeah. And so it's, <laughs> uh, oh, yeah. but, but the, yeah, so it's, it, it is one of those things that is that like, for sure, we need to be very conscious, conscientious of, of what we're doing. And, um, and yeah, it's, it's really important for us to, to not just be like, Oh yeah, we're, we're growing, we're growing our businesses and that's our contribution to society. You all figure out the education piece. You all figure mm-hmm. out the, the housing piece of it. You know, I think that, I think there's a lot of things that that we um yeah and i I think ryan is is a great example of somebody who's just like taking it so seriously um yeah like it's been really cool to see how he's how he's really stepped up from like like yeah like i i own one of one of the largest tech companies and co-founder of one of the largest tech companies in the state to like i now own like the flagship organization yeah, of Utah. The front door of yeah, Utah. yeah. Like the thing that's like it's like it's not the most important thing, but it's the most visible thing. It's the most important thing. Oh yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But uh yeah, no, it, it's been it's been really cool. And I think that's a great example of that, of like, you know, I think that that uh to not leave behind communities and 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 other things along the way. He's taken some flack for some of the things that he's done, but I just love to see it. Like well, I, we always take flack for yeah. anything we do. Um and that that part is like a given you're going to get that what i like about what he's showing i think the rest of us is like hey we can be in the broader cultural conversation we don't just have to talk to ourselves yeah right there's something kind of beautiful about that it's like i'm going to be in the broader utah cultural conversation 
and we're going to talk about issues and problems and challenges, and we're going to preach and spread the word about how great it is at the same time. Yeah. That's yeah. pretty fascinating. We're, we haven't really done that before. So uh, Kirk Weeman, I think you know Kirk, that uh -huh. was co-founder of, of Scan, oh, yeah. that was acquired by Snapchat. Uh, he, he, he talks about how like so much of uh, Snapchat was like design inspired um, and, and how that's doing that his new company, Phi, that we're, we're investors in. Um, he, he's so much of like how he's thinking about it is like, how do we have design at the forefront? And, and you think about folks uh, that like lead with culture, lead with design, and it's not an afterthought, but it's like, hey, the way that this becomes a thing is by thinking about the culture the, and the impact that we have on the greater society. And I love the way that Kirk's approaching it. And, and, mm. and it's that it's like, hey, if we want to like strike a chord with people, we need to do it from like a uh, a design centered uh, sort of sort of a mindset, and and I think that that a lot of us can can learn a lot from that perspective of like yeah how does this affect humans yeah and 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 then it just all like people care about it more you know yeah. and and I think that's I think that's a, a really strong lesson to be take, taken as like you know the shut up and dribble thing is yeah. like like the, it's not just that like these yeah. things don't exist in a vacuum they they spill over and if you think that they don't spill over then you're just not paying attention and so it's like it is very in, important for us to be like yep how does this affect the people around us yeah um, and be very thoughtful about that and like what role does our voice play and by the way this isn't just a Utah thing I think I think the broader tech community is waking up to like, hey, we have a lot of like um, influence. We have a mm -hmm. voice here. We don't have to go through normal media channels. I think the best example of that is like um, the All In podcast mm -hmm. yeah. becoming as like successful as it is. Yeah. And it's like when I was first like watching or like listening to the All In podcast, it was like, oh, this is they're giving really interesting takes on like economic issues, like things that are like their bread and butter. Now you'll yeah. tune in. And it's like, here's why I don't like the war in Ukraine. I'm all like, what? Yeah. And like people are taking it very seriously. And by the way, they should take it seriously. I haven't, you know, there's no reason that why that voice shouldn't be heard over anybody else's. But that's new for tech to yeah. be in those conversations. That's yeah. that's an interesting thing. Yeah, for sure. And I and I think it's it's one of those things that as as we like it, it comes with the influence that, that you have. Like, it, it's not a small deal that I, I think the number's like 90,000 tech workers in Utah. Mm -hmm. um, like, that's that's a massive number of folks that are impacted by the by the community here, you know, and, and what we're doing and the livelihoods of the state. So the trickle-down trickle effect is just so huge. So for us to... Um, to not take that seriously, it, it, it's just, you know, it's just like, ah, oh, I'm just building. It's like, ah, oh, we, yeah. there's, there's so much more to be done. So, yeah, that's interesting. Um, what's next for you? Yeah. Um, so just investing in a lot, a lot of great startups. Um, Utah tech week, uh, is, is a, is a big thing that, that we're doing. So that's the second week, uh, or third week of January 22nd to 27th. Um, it's, uh, honestly for us, it's, it's, uh, just kind of like put it out there and then the, then the community yeah. comes together for that. Um, and, and then, anybody can go there. You go to utahtechweek.com and anyone can host an event, right? Mm -hmm. And yep. It's free to host an event. Most of them are free to attend, if yep. not all. I'm not. Yeah. But um, yeah, it's it's pretty beautiful. Yeah, yeah, and and it you know it, it's it's like very much like thanks to like you and everything that that the, you and the Gundersons and Beehive and early 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 days of all that. And it's just like yeah, it, it's one of those things where for for us is just like oh let's p just put it out in the world and then everyone kind of kind of gathers around it you know so it's well yeah, the grassroots events like that like utah tech week they're really special because you never really know what's going to come out of them for like five years yeah yeah right like it's they're like one of these things where like you know it's not like a silicon slope summit where we like we're going to put somebody up there. They're going to say something that may like make a newspaper like that week. Like, yeah. the, like what's fascinating about that? Like they're, they're, they're pure community building events. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Totally. That's what's cool about the, about that. And, um, yeah, yeah, the fact that you're doing Utah Tech Week is sweet. It's way better than anything we ever did. Oh, that's we were trying that's to do. That's definitely like, not true. The, the, that, those were the pinnacles. Start, start SLC and Starfest. That, that nothing will be better than those. those start things. SLC is my favorite event of all time. Yeah, um, just because I think we pulled it off with like 20k. Yeah, and like we were moving chairs. Yeah, and we were moving things around and. Um, it, wa it wasn't clear that it was like an event for uh, like half of it. Like, we're like, oh, there's not too many people here. This is real. And then the pitch competition came and we packed that place. It's yeah. 
whoa yeah this is crazy what uh, who who was it i can't remember who who it was that won but I, there's i have like this mo- this picture in my mind of like they, they won the two checks from you know the huge huge mm-hmm. checks and they like were holding the checks and flapping them like yeah. like there's just like moments like that you're like you're like how is that popping into my head right now you know there's just so many cool things of like of like man uh, you know that was sconard was there on stage yeah, he we spoke had and that was, i think that was the first time sconard had talked to our community yeah yeah randomly enough yeah. like um because again like a lot of these guys weren't as well known like ryan was there ryan came yep. he wasn't even the keynote yeah. he was just like one of the panels yeah right? that, that, and that, that's that those will never be taught in, <laughs> in my mind like that was the that was because like like what you guys did was he captured something that was like please organize us like like there's there's this like groundswell of things that was happening and and utah was just like hey will somebody just like like put us all in the same room with each other and like you guys just did a did such a good job I think some of of the nostalgia we have for it though is because it took all of us Mm. because and and like it wasn't very well organized we weren't good at it and it was clear we weren't good at it (laughs) we didn't know what we were doing and it was clear we didn't know what we were doing and so if anybody ever knocked on the door or hit us up and said like hey uh you want us to help with that like yeah we don't know what to do. <laughs> like I remember Craig yeah. Peeler, when he was CEO of Spingo, he built the stage for us. Oh, really? Ah, that's crazy. Yeah. And I'm yeah. like, you can put Spingo a banner on the stage if you want for doing that for us. And he did. Yeah. And like it's if every picture you see from that, there's like this Spingo <laughs> banner. Yeah, it's amazing. Just it's because amazing. he built the stage and yeah. like all that stuff. Like we wouldn't have had a stage without him. I wouldn't even thought to have a stage. <laughs> You're like, oh, that's probably something. People should be able to see the speakers. That, <laughs> that's that, that's probably wild. a thing that we should prioritize. So I highly recommend people go to utahtechweek.com, host events. I'm sure Silicon Slopes will host some events inside of there, which is really cool. I love that you're doing that. And you got you got a whole crew doing it, right? Like with mm. Kickstarter and yeah. it's it's a whole community thing. Yeah, yeah. Most most of the VC funds here in, in town have got behind it. Kickstarter, Signal Peak, Mercado, um, Philo Ventures, Frame VC. Uh, shoot, I hope I'm not missing anyone that that is uh, that right. is that is back in it. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's it's re- the biggest 114 events that happened last year, and uh, uh, 2,500 total unique registrants, 10,000 yeah. people that attended all the events. So yeah, it's just a it's just a fun thing, fun choose your own adventure. Um, and yeah, it's just it's beautiful because the community makes it beautiful. Yeah, yeah. yeah it, anything that's community run and ground up is again, and it's, it's some of them are like. I don't know what we're doing, you yeah. know, like yeah, and th- sure. that's kind of sure. like the beauty of it is like yeah. you walk into something. It's like, yeah, no, this isn't like super. This isn't great. Yeah. This yeah. isn't like a production like this is real. Yeah. Yeah. We it, get it, the most out of those it, experiences. It, 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 and and I, I think like it's it's uh, the, like the thing that that's really cool about this. You know, we talked about we talked we talked at length at, at the Silicon Slope Summit um, about when we we're when we we're doing this. And it's like, oh, yeah, how does this fit in the community? How does this fit in versus uh, not versus it's like Silicon Slope yeah. Summit and Utah Tech Week. Um, and, you know, and, and we're just like, yeah, Silicon Slope Summit plays like this incredible role like the the thing that you guys have done and the people that you've that you've brought and like the fact that every year there's 10,000 plus people that attend and like i yeah. i've never missed a a day of <laughs> of silk and slow summit over over the you know it's like it is an a non-negotiable like like that's when, the funniest thing like if i wasn't putting on silk and slow summit i want to <laughs> we're so different you yeah, and i are so yeah. different in that respect. <laughs> yeah. there's no way i'd go to that <laughs> I love and, and I and I love it. I love it. I, I I like your event better than you like your event. So, but uh, no, and and it is it is true. It it is like like block out the calendar things for so many people in our in our community, and like that's and like the like the um, Tony Robbins thing that you got, like the fact that you got that was like mind blowing to me. I'm like I'm like how is Tony Robbins here in our state, like getting a ten thousand people to dance around? Well, at this all point, the I'm just like I'll. Let's just the fact that we even have this ability. Let's just do the weirdest things possible. Yeah, yeah. let's put an apostle up there. <laughs> let's like, yeah, let's get Tony Robbins up there. Like, what's the weird, crazy thing yeah. that we can do yeah. and kind of put us in a conversation? But yeah, they're completely different because Utah Tech Week is like a grassroots. It's like a start fest or start us to sleep. And I think a lot of people, when um, we created Silicon Slopes as a nonprofit, as like an organization with a board and stuff, rather than just being owned by like Domo, yeah. Um, thought like, oh, Summit is going to be um, the successor to mm. Start SLC or Start Fest, and it, that was never the intention. The intention was always 
let's build a global tech event yeah. that happens to be in Utah, right? Yep. The true successor is Utah Tech Week and Start Fest as it does its thing. You know, like those types of things. Like, like those things kind of like live on. Because some, yeah, that's a whole different thing. Like my preference would be it's almost entirely sponsored by people from out of state. Like 50% of the attendees are out of state 10 years from now. You know, like, yeah. like we have our version of like a South by Southwest or something. That's what that thing always yeah, was supposed yeah, to be. Yeah. yeah. And I, I think to, to me, in my opinion, like mission accomplished, like it, it's like the, it's the names that you, that you get there and like the, like the way that it's, that it attracts eyes and attention and everything like. Yeah, uh, you, you've we'll screw you've it up. It, so yeah, yeah. I mean, wait for us to screw this yeah, up. I can't. How how are you gonna screw it up? Do you think? <laughs> <laughs> oh man, we'll screw it up a million different ways. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This has been a fun journey. Yeah, I'm I'm incredibly impressed with everything you've done. We've known each other for a long time. Um, I I love that you're in venture. I love that you're focusing on the early stage. I think uh, you know Utah entrepreneurs are so lucky to have someone like you who knows everyone, can surround them with community. Like when I think of like, not that I'm a VC, I've never been a VC, I'd be a horrible VC. Um, but when I think of like that role, it really is about, I can surround you with enough body armor that maybe some of the hits won't be as hard, right? Or maybe some of the errors won't get through. And I think you're really good at that. Mm, thank you, yeah. thank you. I, I, I um, yeah, I think that that's that's one of the things that we that every VC says that they care. I, I think that's that's uh, one of the core tenets of of what we're trying to do is just well, you're just innately care. good at bringing the community together. Like it seems like sometimes VCs um, are great at the VC side, like the investor yeah. and like the paperwork side. And then they got to learn how to be good at like bringing community together, bringing these events together, like all that type of stuff. You I, I, are the exact opposite, <laughs> which is awesome. Yeah. I mean, that, that was the basis for what we, what, the way we started, started the fund is, is like, oh, we think that we can build, like, there's a lot of things that we don't think that we do as well as the other funds. It was like the co community building is the one thing that I, I, I'm like, yeah, I think, I think that we're legitimately better than anyone who is or will try to do VC. Like, I think that's the thing that, that's like, oh, yeah. that we can, that we can do pretty well. So I'm excited for the accelerator too. I want people, how do people check that out? Yeah, honestly, I don't know. We're, we just, we, we just we just did the we just did the first alpha version the second one like we're still kind of like I, honestly I'm gonna get through get through Utah Tech Week and and then see how see how we do it last one was invite only um, so it was founders that that had pitched us um, that we had spent some time with and we're like these are founders that we'd like to spend eight weeks with so um, just pitch you like yeah, maybe the yeah, call to action here convo is... yeah convoyventures.com yeah. go go there's a pitch pitch us or something whatever um, and you can go in and if you've got a startup then yeah, come come spend some time with us. We we uh, one thing that I think is is a little different about us is we'll listen to any pitch. We don't require a, a, a warm intro or anything like that. It's like our our front door is open always, and it's just right there on our on our uh, the very top button. There's two buttons at the at the at the top of the page, you know, so that yeah. that say like pitch us, and so yeah. Last question um, before we go here: What's the craziest Scott Paul story you have? Oh, uh, let's see. That you can talk about on yeah, air in front of yeah. thousands of people. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> um, let's see. Oh, there's just so many that are coming to mind. Uh, the craziest Scott. Paul. So one from Camp Convoy. So Camp Convoy is our. Uh, it, it, uh, this isn't the craziest one, but this is one that like brings a smile to my face as I, as I'm thinking about it. So Camp Convoy is our our summer camp for startups. It's what we do for our LPs. It's what we do for our our, uh, our port co-founders. And so we went down to uh, Rockin' Our Ranch down by uh, uh, Escalante. Um, and so we we were down there and we had we were doing this like lasso competition. Yeah. And uh, Scott Scott all of a sudden is like. Like I'm gonna give a thousand giddy or something like that, you know, like whatever whatever you said to uh, to anyone that can lasso me, and then he just starts running, and so people that had lassos in there, they're like, okay, and then they start, and so they just everyone just like, and th uh, two people lassoed his neck and his feet at the same time, and so he had this like huge uh, rope where he's like, that was so dumb. He's like, don't let me do stuff like that anymore. That hurt a lot. So uh, there's just always always fun stuff. That's I love Scott. that guy. He That's is incredible. He is one of a, he's our he's our superpower a lot. Um, and he's, he's one of the things that like, just really, I think differentiates, uh, just the vibe of what we're trying to do of just like, uh, he's a polarizing character. And I think a lot of people are like, Oh, I don't know about Scott and the wigs and the costumes and everything like that. I, love it. I, 
I, he just bring and, and like uh, th- like we said earlier, we we're looking for freak founders, and yeah. and freak founders see a builder in Scott, and they see somebody who's just like at their core, just like give me your weirdest ideas, give me the most off the wall thing that you can do, and like and I think most founders find comfort in somebody like knowing that like there is nothing I can say that's going to be su- surprising yeah. to Scott, you know, yeah. and and so it's like and in this journey where it's lonely and you feel crazy and all these things, it's nice to have somebody who's a little crazy along yeah. with, along with you. Yeah, you guys are like extreme extroverts, both of you. Yeah. Like, again, like I'm an extreme introvert. It's it's really that's why I love like seeing what you guys are doing and the, the various ways you can do it because you guys so you guys seem super accessible. Yeah, yeah, right? that, the, yeah. That's that's the that's the pro, that's probably the biggest thing that we try. I don't know the biggest thing, but that's a huge part that we try to do. Um, is like I. Uh, try to make myself available on LinkedIn. Like I have like, um, we have our pitch thing on on the website. I post my, like my Marco Polo link on, on LinkedIn all the time. I'm like, Hey, reach out to me. And then I just have like month long conversations with random founders and stuff. And we get to know each other really well. Um, one founder that, uh, that we backed Renato Villanueva, we got to know each other over volley, RIP volley with Josh Little, uh, Josh Little startup. And, and like within days I was like, this guy's, so insanely intense and i like we and we wrote a check within like a couple weeks from volley conversations oh, you know cool. and it was it was one of those things of just like like i just noticed hit someone working on a stealth startup on linkedin and reached out to him and i was in i was in hawaii when we were when we were talking and i was just volleying back and forth with him with him when i was in hawaii and and uh yeah it was and we just just because i was like huh someone's working on a stealth startup who's this guy you know That's and cool. just reached out there so That's yeah incredible. we we think that we find find kind of some uh some hidden gems by by being so accessible oh for sure yeah for sure uh thanks brother thanks for doing this thanks this is super fun yeah. always good to hang clint yeah like it.